The CDC dropped a scary truth bomb on us this week. The US will soon be in a post-antibiotic era. But don't panic. Actually, do panic. We all gon' die. Hello folks, Lacey Green here, and this is D News. The days of using antibiotics to treat common bacterial infections are numbered. Many of the bacteria that make us sick are rapidly developing defenses against the treatments that we have to kill them off, which leaves us with lots of sick people and no way to cure them. In their 114-page report, the CDC says that in the US, more than 2 million people every year are getting sick from antibiotic-resistant bacteria. They've estimated that the current death toll is about 23,000 per year, but they've stressed that this is a very conservative estimate. They classified the antibiotic resistant bacteria into three threat levels, urgent, serious, and concerning. There are three bacteria in the urgent category. The first is Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, which causes life-threatening diarrhea. The second is gonorrhea, the sexually transmitted infection that can cause burning while peeing, discharge, illness, and even infertility. Gonorrhea is the second most common infection in the US, and a third of cases no longer respond to most treatments. The last is CRE bacteria. This is a group of bacteria which includes E. coli. These bacteria are common in hospital settings and half of people who are infected will die because of antibiotic resistance. Other bacteria in the serious and concerning threat levels include salmonella, pneumonia, candida, and strep, which freaks me out because antibiotic resistance has the power to return us to a time when it was common for people to die from ordinary infections. Yeah, not cute. So why is this happening? For one, antibiotics are way overprescribed. Four out of five Americans are prescribed antibiotics every year, which is a rate the CDC describes as excessive. Some doctors hand it out like candy because it's a quick fix or because patients insist on it. It's prescribed without any medical necessity or benefit. For instance, the cold is one of the most common conditions antibiotics are prescribed for, and yet it does literally nothing to cure a cold. Plus, every time you take an antibiotic, the organisms in your body are at a greater risk of resisting that antibiotic for over a year. Another culprit here is patients not finishing their antibiotics. Folks are like, hey, I'm not sick anymore, so I'm not gonna finish these up. But this allows any remaining bacteria to survive and adapt, and those superbugs then multiply, spread, and can't be treated. And then there is industrial scale animal farming, which is a whole other can of worms, but the basics are this. About 70% of antibiotic use in the US is on animals. Antibiotics allow farmers to pack livestock together in ways that would otherwise spread illness like wildfire. But because of the antibiotics, the animals don't get sick, and they also get bigger, producing more meat, and then people eat that meat, so... That's a thing. The debate is hot and it's not black and white, but scientists believe that these sub-therapeutic levels of antibiotics in our food, plus the excessive antibiotic use in humans equals big trouble. So what can you do? Well, make sure you actually need antibiotics when you prescribe them. Finish those puppies up and hope that the scientists find a solution soon, which they might. As we speak, biologists at UC San Diego are working on methods to create new antibiotics by performing autopsies on bacterial cells. So then we can create create super, super, super mega bugs. Sweet! So hey guys, thanks for watching. If that gonorrhea thing freaks you out, we did another D News on it, so check it out. And let us know what you think down below or on Twitter, at D News. I'll see you next time.